So what they did then was they said, well, the one with the most links pointing into the website has got to be the most important. So the second thing then became links. And they had all these different sites pointing. So in essence, basically, what you had, if I can borrow you three, please. Um, I need a uh, butcher, a baker, and a candlestick maker. <laughs> okay. You guys actually need to link arms with the website because you're linking to the website. <laughs> you don't get this happy when you go out. Okay, so bacon, bread, um, candlestick maker, and you can hold my sausage. <laughs> um, so they would get the butcher, the baker, the candlestick maker, and what we did at that point is we started these things called link farms. Where we would just we would contact any website in cyberspace, cyberspace and say link to us. If you link to us, we'll link to you. You probably get that still now. You probably get emails coming in going, hey, I've seen your website, it's really cool, do you want to link to me? I'll link to you. You know, but it's from something as unrelated um, to a florist as, as possible. So then they realized that we were starting to create like 2,000, 5,000, 10,000 links to these sites. And it just it just wasn't real, it wasn't real. The results that were coming up just weren't relevant to the keyword that was being searched for. Okay? So, butcher baker, candlestick baker, you can sit down. Um, and they started to look for relevant links. So links coming in from, if I can take the first three, uh, and they started to look for things related to the actual subject. So Latin names for flowers. Makeflowerslast.com. Giftflowers.com. So you need to and they tried to find it relevant, so they changed this link to say well, it's not just links, it's relevant links. Okay. And what they're what they're basically doing is they're looking for Central authority for a particular subject matter. So they know that flowers links in with florists, links in with horticulture, links in with roses, lilies. And Google's clever enough, it's got enough people searching to know what words are associated with what words um, and what sites are associated with what, what sites. So from that they can now get the most relevant, most relevant site. Thank you very much, you can all sit down. <laughs> Thank you for applause and thank you. Then they bought something in quite recently, or well, recently, the last couple of years. The, sort of the, the third factor is the domain history. And this sort of makes sense because if, you've, if you're on a website and in the past you've proved that uh, your search results come to the top of the listings every time, and people are clicking on it, and Google knows that people are clicking on it, and Google also knows that people come directly back to the site after they've clicked on it. So they recognize when you come back. So if you come straight back, they know that the site you clicked on for a particular search can't be relevant because you, it isn't the right result for you. You know, you've got to click somewhere else. So it's storing all that data. And if you've proved that you're top of the list in the past and you've done well, then it's going to keep you there. So it's harder to start a new website and get to the top of the listing. Okay, it's become even more, it's become a lot more difficult in the last sort of three or four years to get higher up in the search engines than it used to be back in the Wild West days, 10, 10 or 15 years ago when the internet first started. Yeah.